I spent over 100 hours on this Minecraft glitch. Why? Well, let me show you. See, now I can do stuff like this. And this. And more importantly, this. And I can do all of that in Simply Survival. And if you didn't know, Simply Survival is my solo survival world. Completely survival. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you everything I know about the glitch. I'm going to be showing you what the glitch does, how to do the glitch, possible disasters that come alongside the glitch, and of course, what you could potentially get from doing over 100 hours of the glitch. So, if you are new to the channel, do me a solid and hit that subscribe button. That being said, let's jump straight on into today's video. Firstly, I want to briefly give you an explanation of what the glitch is. The glitch is called Gravity Block Conversion. It was found by a user that goes by the name of Obi. I'm going to throw his YouTube channel in the description below. The glitch does exactly what the name says, gravity block conversion. It converts gravity blocks to pretty much any block in the game. For example, any of these blocks could turn into a wall or even a cactus, maybe an oak block, a stone block, or even a piece of obsidian, an observer, or a per per block? Is that, is that right? Or that? You get what I'm saying? Any block in the game, literally, even blocks you saw me using at the beginning of the video. Unobtainable blocks, illegal blocks, whatever you want to call them. That being said, some blocks are more rare than others. And how this works is on block state. So for whatever reason, you get so many walls whilst doing this glitch. However, it's very, very improbable that you will get the end portal tile. But, I mean, it's not impossible. And not only this, you can get so much more illegal blocks. And we'll look into that a little bit further on into the video. But before that, I want to dig in to the possible disasters that this glitch can actually bring. I say disasters because they quite literally are disasters. I've had a number of them happen to me. So, if you're thinking about attempting this glitch, I would definitely, definitely watch this next part. Which brings us to this part. Now, let me explain the story without completely confusing you. This glitch actually got patched in the 1.16.100 version of the game. And of course, me being me, I wanted to do the glitch when it got patched. I mean, I didn't want to do it when it got patched, I mean, I just decided to do it after it got patched, you know? And at the point when I decided I really wanted to do the glitch, I was actually living here on my island survival getaway. Ooh, very nice. But, and this is a big but, if you load your world in the latest version of the game, you cannot take that specific world back into previous version. Of course, it starts raining. Right, let's roll with it. Bottom line is you can't go back once you've loaded your game in the most recent version. Or can you? See, a bunch of big brains in the technical community told me that basically if you edit your world in a thing called world edit, you can actually adjust the last version it was opened in, allowing you to open your world in previous versions. I was so happy to hear this. Not only did it mean that I could get a bunch of illegal blocks, no, literally that's, that's the only thing it meant, but yeah. I could do the glitch, but I paid the ultimate price. Going back on your world can really, really badly corrupt your world. At first, I actually thought it was worse than it actually is, but as you can see, this is how my base was, my little island getaway. It's kind of cool. I'm kind of happy with it. Doesn't look like I've done a lot. I mean, I spent a lot of time here, but it ended up like this. As you can see, bunch of chunks just reset. So my base, my original portal were completely gone. The terraforming that I did had gone. A couple of farms had completely gone. Some stuff, however, was still there. As you can see right over there is my gold farm. We got a portion of this fenced off area where I kept my farm animals and like a little bit of farmland there. And of course, just in the distance over there, we have Jam Tower. So yeah, 
I was kind of disappointed that I lost this. And at first, um, I genuinely thought I lost a whole lot. I mean, some people say this is bad. Some people, like, it's not that bad. I was gutted. I genuinely was gutted. I loved this island. It's, a, it's only a small island, but, you know, I mean, I spent a bunch of time here, like I said. That's the first decision you've got to make. Is the risk worth it? And for me, it was. So before we've even done the glitch, we've lost some of our chunks because they've got fully reset. Now, I will say that some people have actually gone back and said, like, it's not damaged their world whatsoever. However, there is a high chance of corruption. So, yeah, there's a big risk. See, in the many hours of doing the glitch, I devised three kind of methods of doing it. All have the same outcome, but they're slightly different ways of doing it. But before I show you those ways, I do want to show you some of the bad things that can happen. At the start of the video, you see me go through the portal next to me. This portal is completely broken now. I have no idea why. If I go through this portal, it takes me to the middle of the island. And by the way, let me just add, that is lucky. To have a broken portal like that, that is very lucky. Before, when I went through that portal, it completely took me underneath the island, meaning, um, like, yeah, I just died. So, you might be wondering what's on the other side of that end gateway. Well, there is another 20 end gateways stacked on top of each other. Now, I'm not exactly sure how this happened, but what I can tell you is I did not have this before I started doing the glitch. We tried to replicate it, I couldn't replicate it until I started doing the glitch. One day, I was just doing it, I looked over here, and I was like, oh my word. Look at all of these end gateways. How crazy is this? And like I said, I can only put this down to the glitch. It's very crazy. Although the stack portals do look really, really good, I mean, it's a huge problem. We've got a broken end gateway now, which is kind of long. We can't go through there, we can't explore. Um, I'm fortunate enough it, for it to only happen to one. So, um, yeah, I mean, potentially this could happen to a lot more. I was using two machines on two different gateways. What I noticed in doing this, uh, activating two gateways at the same time, I don't know if this is 100% foolproof, but what I noticed anyway is it almost definitely broke one of my gateways. This one that I'm standing at almost definitely broke all the time. So I just went back to using one single gateway. Another really dangerous thing can be the actual conversion itself. So to actually do the glitch, we need to actually place blocks into an end gateway. And as I said at the beginning, these conversions can sometimes be blocks that really don't belong in the game. Meaning, your game can just completely crash. Now here's the thing, I spent ages doing this glitch, so I kind of got good timing and like, like good knowledge on how to do it. One thing I did learn is always have a backup. Always have backups on backups of doing this, okay? Because I can guarantee you, you are gonna need that backup. The amount of backups I used doing this glitch was actually insane. And that's because of the conversion sometimes. Sometimes it made a crash conversion, which just made my game crash out. And sometimes the block literally stays there. So it, it's there. So you've got to do one of two things. If you can't get close enough to the block without the game crashing for it to disappear, I mean, you've got to go on world edit and delete the block, which is super, super long. So make sure you have backups. So yeah. I think I've covered the majority of the dangerous things. I mean, if you've done this glitch before and you think I've missed any, let me know in the comment below. I will say this is very, very dangerous. And if you do choose to attempt this, you are attempting this at your own risk. Method number one, providing you can remove a little bit of bedrock. The simplest way to do this is to place gravity blocks through the end gateway. Now, I've picked nine different gravity blocks, which means my hotbar is full. So every time I place nine through, I will log off, which will make the blocks convert. I will then place another nine through, log off again until I've done this a total of 10 times. That means in total, I should get about 90 different blocks. Give or take a few, right? This just means there is an increased chance of illegal blocks through the other side of the portal. However, this also means that there is an increased chance of crashes and just like bad blocks, crash blocks. 
However, fortunately this time we was able to get through without the game crashing out. Then what I do before picking up the items is simply log out again. What this does is makes the game like uh, recall the blocks that you've loaded in. And if there is any crash blocks, it will quickly convert it to a safe block to pick up. So yeah, make sure you log out before you pick the items up. And then of course, simply pick up your items and see if you have any good illegal blocks. Method number two came from a bug that originally came in the form of like the menu. We couldn't log out, like save and quit from the menu. So this one is kind of like a force exit out of the game. Uh, bug although there is like a fix to the pause menu uh, I should mention I'm gonna put that in the description below um, However, yeah, this is how I completely found this method and basically I mean it worked actually really really well So basically what you want to do um, I mean it does help if you do have the resource pack on as well But you want to go ahead and get yourself a bunch of gravity blocks uh, Again, I've got two rows. So uh, in total, I've got 18 different gravity blocks here all I'm doing is placing 18 gravity blocks into the end gateway. After I've placed the first 18 gravity blocks through the end gateway, I then place another four that I've already placed through. This is kind of just like for a bit of time, but at the end of the fourth block, we're going to exit out of the game. Now, initially, I found out that after you put those four blocks in, if you quit out of the game, it goes back to a point just before those four blocks so all 18 would have been put through and just the last four literally wouldn't count so it will load us just before we put those last four in another thing i want to mention just before we do load into the world this like exiting out of the game kind of like way of doing it it's probably going to be different on all devices although i mean i had a really good experience with this i used this on my laptop and on my computer and I had a good success rate out of it. So once you load back in to your world, all you simply want to do is go straight through the portal. At this point, you can see that the blocks that we've put through have changed into like different amounts of blocks. We've seen some border blocks there, which are not that great. And if you choose that you do not want the blocks, you can just log out very quickly and like repeat the process again. And you can keep doing this until you actually find a block that you want. I found this method a lot more convenient closer to the end when I was trying to get specific blocks. Uh, I got to a point where I had a hell of a lot of illegal blocks and I only needed certain ones. So this method definitely helped me out for that. And of course, it's very, very convenient, the fact that you only have to put the gravity blocks through once. So yeah, like I said, personally, I think this method is great, but it's not going to be for everybody. However, there are some more perks to this. Say, for example, you find an item like this bit of fire that you can see here, and we want to keep it. All you need to do is wait for a few more seconds on the other side of the portal, and then load back in the game. So kind of do the same process, exit out, load back into the game, and for whatever reason, the items that were there like on the previous drop will stay and more items will come as well. So as you can see, we've got the flame and we've got a bunch of new items. As you can see, we've got a bit of ancient debris, which wasn't there before. What I will say about this method it is 100% down to timing. That does mean if you mess up slightly on the timing, like at the start, you could get less blocks come through altogether. Or, for example, if you get a bunch of blocks that you want to keep, and then you're like, oh my god, I want to keep these, then you're going to want to make sure that you wait long enough. Uh, this time, for example, when we get a nice uh, end portal frame, as you can just see in that little pile, um, I actually logged out way too quick, meaning I didn't get to keep the blocks. Now, we did get to keep the flame, uh, like we've seen earlier, but because I logged out too quick, we lost our end portal frame, which, I mean, it's a pretty good block. So let me just have a look. As you can see, it's completely changed and we lost it. Okay, so soon enough, you are going to want to pick up your block. So to do this, you're going to need to make a save and quit or force exit out of the game. Reason being, you don't want to pick up any crash blocks that you might not be able to see. So as soon as you have made this save point of the game, you're free to then go and pick up your blocks. And yeah, you're going to get a bunch of different like varieties of blocks. As you can see, we actually managed to get ourselves two unobtainable blocks this time. We got a flame and a number four light block. 
Method number three. This is using redstone, commonly known as sand dupers. Now, I have a big message for you guys. So, I have posted a couple videos of sand duplication and gravity block duplication machines on my channel before using end gateways. Now, in those farms, I have added four uh, gravity blocks, but I will say this right now. End gateways can only ever teleport one block per second. So any gravity block duplication machine using end gateways with more than one gravity block in it is just a waste of resources. And yes, that means the farm that we built and I put out on my, on my channel is just like practically a waste of resources. Like I didn't know this at the time. But now we do know. So that means we can just make like a smaller version of that farm. Exactly the same. Just make a quarter of it. Or make something like this. Which was made by Obi. A really great advantage of using this method. Like the redstone method. Is you will only ever need one gravity block. Because of course if we can only get one gravity block per second through a gateway. Then we only need one gravity block. So I mean as far as gravity block collection goes. You're going to save yourself a bunch of time. Next to no materials to actually make the duper itself and then all you've got to do is persist to log on and log off again i found this much better if you actually turn the machine off then log off then turn it back on then turn the machine off then log off if that makes sense i mean sometimes if you didn't turn the machine off i found that the gravity block will actually completely disappear so yeah be careful of that again basically once you're happy with the amount of times you have logged on and off for of course the amount of times that you log on and off is going to be the amount of different block conversions happening of course if you wait for like five seconds and i don't know allow four bits of sand to go through you're going to get four conversions of the same block so the sand is going to convert into four of the same block if that makes sense if i didn't like confuse you too much there okay so once you've logged out the amount of times that you want again i wouldn't do it too many times because of course the more times that you do it the more chance of a crash that could possibly happen uh of course the more times you do do it the more chances that you're going to get an unobtainable block it's kind of like 50 50 it's kind of really like gambling with your time this glitch so it's really your choice which method which type you want to do um, but they all work, they all get the same results as you can see. It's just uh, whichever one works best for you. Finally, we've made it to a point where I'm going to show you everything I managed to get from spending over 100 hours doing this glitch. Now, I'm going to make this clear, very, very clear. I did not intend to spend over 100 hours doing this glitch. In fact, I was so very close to giving up and um yeah i just want to say like to anyone who did join the streams when i was doing that uh thank you because they were boring but i mean it, yeah i fully appreciate the support there um he's so soul destroying this glitch it is not as easy as it seems like the glitch is easy but the time that actually went into it, I mean, like, you, you just can't see it in the video itself. Also, another thing about version switching. Now, it's a thing that can be done very easily on Java Edition. At the moment, on Bedrock Edition, it can't be done as easily. I mean, it still can be done. You can uh, check out the description for a little bit more information on that. And I'm pretty sure in the Caves and Cliffs update, a new UI slash like loading screen for Windows 10 is coming. And I, I believe we're going to be able to go back versions using that. That being said, if you do load your world in the Caves and Cliffs update, I'm fairly certain you will not be able to take your world back no matter what you do. This is down to stuff like, obviously, like, new structures, new items being added to the game, and it just won't work. If you load your world in 1.16 right now and try and go back before the 1.16 update, you won't be able to do it, no matter what you do. That being said, I mean, you can definitely make a brand new world, though, and, you know, have fun with this glitch. Your choice. So, yeah, let's show you what I got. Basically, after all the hours... You can pretty much get anything random, okay? So, I'm just going to show you all the random stuff, and then we're going to head back to my base, and I'll show you all my cool stuff. So, firstly, um, yeah, just anything. Any block you can imagine, and you can pretty much get it. I mean, some stuff is useful. I mean, you might find some of this stuff useful, I don't know, for your base, or... Um, 
redstone. I mean, I think I've got some over here. Because originally, I was going to keep some of the stuff. But, I mean, I decided because it is simply survival. I don't think I should keep anything. Just the unobtainable blocks. I mean, I don't dupe in this world. But you'll uh, find out very shortly that I don't mind duping unobtainable blocks. I mean, that's just like... I mean, they're unobtainable. We're allowed to dupe those, right? But yeah, as you can see random random items they literally could be anything literally could be anything yeah i mean all the items that you're seeing in these chests at the moment well not that one but that one this one this one are literally from this glitch so yeah you can get some pretty random ones so i mean creative copy for a reason i'm gonna blow all this up i mean it'd be kind of fun i mean i am gonna do this on my realm at some point because I don't want all these items. But yeah. I thought it would just be fun to blow up. Right. So we're at my base. First of all, I want to look at these blocks. Now, the border blocks. These these are very like common to get. That's why I've got so many. I haven't even duped any of these yet. I mean, I think I've even managed to get more. But I just threw loads in the lava. A lot of the blocks that I did obtain as well. Which I didn't mention a second ago. I was just throwing straight in the lava. Because I really didn't have any need for them. But yeah, border blocks. I also got every single light block. Uh, like all 16 light blocks. That took me absolutely ages to get. I almost like didn't get all of those. I was very, very close to not getting all those. Okay, so just forget the top line. Um, That portal block wasn't obtained via um this glitch, neither were these leather efficiency helmets. But these blocks uh, kind of like cracked blocks. Kind of weird, all right? I mean, they don't uh, have any texture. Some of them you can place down. Some of them you can't, but I'm not going to place any right now. But yeah, I managed to get all of these ones. There is actually one more block, which is kind of like this shape. It's called the moving block, which I unfortunately didn't manage to get. I think at one point on a copy, I had it. But and then having to go back, I, I mean, I must have lost it. But yeah, definitely awesome blocks to uh, build with. At least I think you can build with some of them. All right, these unobtainable blocks are the blocks that I got most frequently. I mean, end portal frames, I did get quite a lot of using the exiting out of the game method. Uh, flames, lava tiles, water tiles, got a bunch of water tiles all the time. As you can see, um, they're all stacked because I've used the beacon glitch, OP beacon glitch to obviously, like, dupe these. Of course, duping unobtainable items in normal worlds is absolutely fine, in my opinion. Yeah, we got this old stone cutter, which is, like, cool. I think that's, like, a, like, the old texture. We got camera. Some of these blocks you can't even get uh, using commands. Like this one you can't get with commands. Don't know if you can get these with commands. Pretty sure you can't get this with commands. Actually, I don't know. Maybe you can. But you can't get this, right? The reactor core. And finally, we got the more rarer blocks. Now, first of all, I want to start off with invisible bedrock. Now, this one, weirdly enough, I end up getting a bunch of times. Like, a, a bunch, a bunch of times. But I spoke to a few people who have done this glitch. And a few of them say that they haven't actually got this block. So I'm not actually sure. But I could be the only person in the world with this block right now. Like, seriously. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. Um, but that would be cool. Infested stone. Reason I've put this into the uh, the rare box is because, yeah. Um, it took me ages to get this. At first, I just thought it was a piece of stone. Because obviously it just looks like a normal piece of stone. But this is actually the silverfish stone. I'm not sure how rare it is. But it took me ages to get it. Same for this. The glowing obsidian. I got this right at the end. End gateway tiles. I actually managed to get two of these before I even got one of the end portal tiles. And of course we've got the tile end portal name. Which is just like the end portal block which you've seen at the start of the video. This one... Took me so long to get and is the sole reason why I spent so long doing it. I have spoke to a few other people who've done this glitch and have got that block. They all said, I mean, I think one of them said they spent over 20 hours doing it. So they got reasonably lucky. Another guy, uh, Obi, the original founder, said he spent way over 50 hours doing this. And yeah, I ended up, unfortunately, spending over 100 hours doing this glitch. But... We got there in the end. I can now do my super secret project, which is coming soon. Um, I do want to say I do have a 100k special coming out very, very soon. I'm working on that, but I was working on this video, and then we hit 100k. So it's all a bit crazy. But yeah, thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. It really does mean a lot. I'll catch you on the next one.